Hello, today I'm going to be ranking all the Mega Man ZX Ivan bosses from easiest to hardest. For this list in particular, I have some very important rules. For Mega Man ZX Advent, I will be counting all bosses as if they are on expert mode. This is by far the hardest setting, so the bosses get to show their potential. The only exception is Mega Man A, but that has no difficulty setting to work with. For most bosses, I will be using only Model A. This is because it's the earliest model you get in the game, and every boss in the game is made with this model in mind. The only exceptions are the intro stage boss and the bosses in Mega Man A. Since you don't have it in both of those, for Mega Man A, I will be ranking the hardest variant of those bosses. This is because a boss in Mega Man A shows up twice, so I will be counting the harder one. The final rule is that I will be counting the exclusive attacks that some bosses have. This is because some bosses will do different attacks based on if you're playing as Gray or Ash. I'll just be counting all of them for the sake of this video. With that out of the way, let's rank all the bosses from this game. Number 18, Dugo the Giant. Dugo the Giant has two hands that can be used as platforms. They will rise up and down, and his eyes are the only vulnerable area. Both eyes can only take one health bar of damage before being destroyed. Dugo will open his eyes, and lasers will come out of them, traveling until they get near the middle of the arena. Just go to the middle of the arena, you'll never be hit there. If he loses an eye, that eye will not fire off a laser. Dugo will spit out several tiny fireballs from his mouth. Get away from where he spits them. The center platform will emit fire, covering the sides. Get away from any platforms that are on the same height level as the fire. One of Dugo's hands will go off screen. That hand will then be above the other hand, and that hand will slam down into the other hand. Go to the center platform. Ash has the harder fight against Dugo, as there is no floor across the entire arena, so you can fall to your death, if you somehow manage to do that. Still, this fight is an absolute cakewalk. Number 17, Albert Capsule. Albert can teleport, making him invincible until he reappears. Albert will fire out four shots. These will home towards you slowly, until going directly towards you. Try to bait them out the best you can to dodge it, by jumping or sliding. Albert will fire four electric shots from the bottom of the capsule. You only have to worry about two, as two of them will go on either side. Just jump over the shots. Albert Capsule has little or no invincibility frames, meaning you can do a lot of damage to him very quickly. This version of Albert is incredibly easy, and it's just a heavily watered-down version of Mega Man 7's Wily Capsule. Number 16, Headshock. Headshock's arena has several platforms, making the fight technically have a lot more space to work with. There is also a hole in the ground, which Headshock can use to her advantage. It isn't a bottomless pit. Headshot can move around normally and jump onto the platforms. Use this for free damage. Headshot can fill the bottom of the arena up with water. This powers up her attacks if she does them in the water. Headshot can roll up into a ball, and she will roll across the arena with her spikes out, bouncing if she hits the walls. This attack is nothing to worry about normally, but it's still easy to dodge even with the water, as you just camp on the top platform. She can also roll up without the spikes, which means she has a chance to go into the hole in the ground. Headshot will fire electric bullets from her hand. These are very easy to dodge. Strangely though, they aren't buffed in the water whatsoever. Headshot can clamp her hands together and fire sparks in many directions. These are faster if they are fired in the water, and she can do this in the ground or air. If they are fired on the ground, they go upward in several angles. If not, they go downward in several angles. When Headshot gets to half health, she can call upon several new rat traps from the holes in the ground and ceiling. They explode after a few seconds. These can be annoying, but are very easily destroyed by the charged and homing shots. Headshock is the easiest pseudoroid in the game, and if you know what you're doing, she can barely do anything to stop you. Number 15, Buckfire. This arena is a lot different from others. You have an upper platform, which can have parts of it be destroyed, and a lower platform. Buckfire can use the Meteor Kick, which will have Buckfire quickly go diagonally down. This can destroy parts of the upper platform. He can bounce off the wall if he hits it with this attack. He is also invincible when he's using this attack, and he can cancel it. It shouldn't be too hard to dodge, as it takes some time before the kick, and there's a really obvious telegraph. Buckfire can use the Crash Burn, which will have Buckfire quickly go upwards. This can break the upper platform. He can also use the Meteor Kick right after this. Same thing as the last attack, it's easy to dodge. Buckfire will shoot three flaming arrows, one going straight, one going up diagonally, and one going down diagonally. Dash under the middle one, but it shouldn't be too hard to do that. Buckfire will launch his arm blades into spinning tomahawks. There will be two of them, one on each side. 
keep line in triangles before going back to him. Either stay away if you're far away, or if you're close, jump over the tomahawk as it's going back to him. While it can't be hard to take him down without taking damage, the fight itself isn't anything to worry about. Number 14, Model ZX. I'll be referring to both Vent and Ale, the two characters you can fight against, as Model ZX for simplicity's sake. Model ZX will go to either side and go to the ceiling, and then slowly fall down on the wall. They either shoot a semi-charge shot followed by several normal shots, or a single charge shot. You can make them stop the attack early by hitting them with a charge shot, or bidding them to release darers if they shoot a charge shot. Model ZX will do several rolling slashes. These have short range, so stay away. Model ZX will charge their saber, going up a wall in the process. They then jump off the wall and release their charge saber on either bottom corner. Hug the opposite wall they are on. Model ZX can do a dash slash if they get close to you. It's easy to prevent this attack by staying far away from them. If they use this, you can jump to a wall to dodge it. Model ZX can use a triple slash. While this is easy to dodge, if you get hit by it, you're dead, as the triple slash does enough damage to eliminate an entire health bar. At half health, Model ZX will use their exclusive attacks. As Gray, Model ZX uses Fission. Model ZX will stab the ground with their saber, having four rocks as debris in the process. This attack only lands on the ground, so stay in the air and you'll be completely fine. As Ash, Model ZX uses Rising Fane. They can do this after a triple slash or landing after a rolling slash. A wave of energy will go straight forward really fast. If you are in front of this wave, you'll get hit. To prevent this attack from being an issue, always keep your distance. This fight is really cool, but it's cheesed by just keeping your distance and constantly using charge and homing shots. They aren't the easiest boss since they do have dangerous attacks, even an insta-kill, but keeping your distance is really easy, making them easy. Number 13, Albert from Mega Man A. There are two spikes in the middle of the arena. These insta-kill you if you touch them, so you have to jump over them, making you vulnerable to sudden attacks. Albert has blue and orange bits around him. These can shoot him from attacks. He will fire these off. He will have two different attacks with them, depending if he fires them off in the air or near the ground. If Albert fires off the bits on the ground, they'll go directly straight towards you, with varying heights. The blue ones stick to the wall, the orange ones bounce off. Then, the blue ones will go back to Albert, and you have to jump over them. Jump over or slide under the bits as they go. If Albert fires them off in the air, the bits will drop two at a time towards the ground. For the bits, the same rules apply with the last attack, so try to dodge them the best you can. Albert can also occasionally swoop down. He does this when he's in the air before using his ground attack, and to move his position. Albert has little or no invincibility frames, which means you can do a lot of damage if you get close to him. Albert can be a little tricky to beat, but keep dodging and you'll be fine. And if you get an opportunity to do a lot of damage, use it. He'll probably be dead before he can use another attack. Number 12, Chrono Force. Chrono Force usually starts the fight by going into the background and rotating his tail, like a clock. This increases his speed relative to yours, which makes his attacks go faster. Because of this, if you were to use Chrono Force's time bomb against him, he doesn't get slowed as much as if he would if he didn't use it. Chrono Force will go to your vertical position and fire free ice needles. He fires one at a time, so the needles will also go to your vertical position, but they will only move straight. When Chrono Force fires the third needle, he will swim until he leaves the screen. The best way to dodge this is to let Chrono Force create two needles near the ground. Jump just before he creates the third needle, so it will be fired off near the ground, and then jump over that one, as Chrono Force will be high enough to where you can just jump over it, or dash under the third needle without worry. Chrono Force will align himself on either of the top two corners of the screen, and create eight ice needles, four at a time. All eight will go down diagonally. Dodge this by getting close to Chrono Force's tail, but not too close to where you'll get hit. And when he creates the first four needles, just dash and you'll dodge them all. Chrono Force burrows himself into the ground, becoming invincible. He then opens his shell, creating four missiles that are small versions of him. These four missiles will go to where you are at the moment, and then Chrono Force will travel on the ground. Do not dash jump until the missiles go towards you, then dash jump over them, and you'll dodge this attack. Chrono Force will rotate his tail and rush forward at high speed. The tail will pull you if you get close to it. Just do a big dash jump over Chrono Force. If Chrono Force is at half health when he does this attack, he will use the next attack immediately after. When Chrono Force is at half health, he will go into the background and shoot his 8 spikes. Clockwise or counterclockwise, these will try to hit you from all angles. If you get hit by a spike or get too close to one, it will split into 4 smaller spikes. He then turns his tail, making the spikes and the splitted spikes if you got hit come back to him, as if he's turning back time. Stay near the middle of the screen while moving to make sure the spikes don't split. 
Chrono Forge can be a very weird boss to fight at first, but it isn't anything too bad once you learn his patterns. Number 11, Rossbark. Rossbark has two forms he can be in, his flower form and his bulb form. There is only one attack both forms can do, while the rest can only be done in flower form. There are four pulls in the arena, he uses these to move around in flower form. Rossbark can try to strike you with his tendril in either form. This attack can also be electrified, electrifying any pull in its reach, making energy spread for the entire pull. If you are above Rossbark, he can go to his bulb form, attempting to fall on you. Dash out of the way if you can, but it shouldn't be that hard to do. Rossbark will swing his arm, firing off four forms at different angles. It can be hard to dodge, since the forms are actually really fast, but the damage is relatively low, only killing you in four hits. If he is a good amount above you though, this attack does nothing to you. Rossbark will swing his arm, firing free electric forms at you. The forms will create a triangular field of electricity when they hit the wall, which can damage you if you go to it. This is easy to dodge, because the forms are slow and the area of energy doesn't last for too long. When Rossbark gets to half health, he can charge up and fire free massive beams of electricity. He will then slide across the pole he performed the attack on. When it ends, the poles within reach also electrify, sending energy through them. He recovers 6 HP when he does this. If he does this above you, high enough to where you can dash under him, or close enough to wall jump over him, this is an absolute joke to dodge, and a way to get free damage in. If he does it lower than you can dash, dodging this attack can be pretty hard depending on how close he is to you, as you have to time your wall jumps with the beams and Rossbark's movement. Rossbark's generally easy, and can be killed fast, but if you get unlucky, it could be a tricky fight, and potentially be higher up than some others on this list. Number 10, Fetus. Fetus will dash along the screen and twist his halberd around. Sometimes he feints the attack. It can be hard to react to it, depending on where he uses it. But as a general tip, move away when he gets close. Fetus will stop and fire a triangular wave of energy. You can easily dash away from it, but where he uses it can be tricky to react to. As Gray, Fetus will fire two ice dragons that will home towards you, but they cannot home towards you when you pass them, so just jump through them once they home towards you and you'll be fine. As Ash, Fetus will make a giant formation of ice. He shatters it, releasing seven ice shards. These can be destroyed by the homing shot, but this can be hard to react to up close. Fetus summons a machine on the ground that summons several snowflakes. The snowflakes can be destroyed by the homing shot. The machine will then vacuum the snowflakes in, and this vacuums you as well. It will take some time before he uses this attack, so hug a wall that the machine isn't in. Since he will be vacuumed, try to stick to the wall as best as you can, and just worry about whatever snowflakes you haven't destroyed. The machine itself can also be destroyed, ending the attack early. This fight can be very annoying, but it's not difficult. Ash has the harder fight, but not by much. Number 9, Atlas. Atlas can manipulate her bullets in several ways. These include firing straight forward on the ground, firing from the air if she is above you, upward if you are above her, and using the buster edit to fire in custom paths. These are relatively easy to dodge, but they are fast. Atlas will fire a charge shot, go at a different height than her. As Gray, Atlas will use the Groundbreaker. She will jump forward and strike the ground, creating a shockwave that travels through it. It shouldn't be too hard to dodge, but she can change her direction before she fires it. As Ash, Atlas will put at least four mines on the ground that explode after a few seconds. Be at a different height than her. You can also use the homing shot to explode them early. As Ash, Atlas will charge forward with her busters, which if they hit you, will knock you away a decent distance. If Atlas hits a wall, she will punch it, causing you to be forced off the wall if you are on one. Stay away, and don't be on a wall. Atlas will use the Blast Bomber. It will be a sphere of energy. When it hits the wall, it splits into 8 small spheres. If you are fast enough, you can use the homing shot against the big sphere, or the smaller spheres, to completely stop the attack. This fight isn't too bad, even with the fact she can easily hit you. Ash has the harder time against her, due to her having more attacks if you fight her with Ash. Number 8, Voltron. Voltron will occasionally teleport across the arena. While it's easy to see where he goes, with all the other fiends that can be on screen, it could be hard to hit him. Voltron can create a barrier while playing his guitar, which temporarily protects him from damage, and it will also hurt you if you touch it. Stay away. Voltron will go to the center of the arena and fire off free sonic booms. These cause free funky junks to be in the arena. They can be temporarily stopped by homing and charge shots, but they take about two or three to kill. When Voltron stops flying and goes to the ground, he will swing his guitar at a close distance from him. If you get hit, you get knocked back, instead of temporarily stunned, so stay away. 
Voltron will go to either side and play his guitar, attracting a mass of junk that will be launched at you. To dodge the junk, go to the sides of the arena and be on the lower ground. This attack will also play sound waves if there is no visible junk on the sides. If you manage to get affected by them, your controls will be flipped. Also, the speakers on the ceiling will fall, blocking you. These can be destroyed easily, but will respawn if he uses this attack again. Voltron will also have his barrier up, like the barrier attack. If any funky junks are still alive, they'll be faster. Voltron is an easy fight. If you know what you're doing, you'll be fine, but things can go wrong very fast. Number 7, Bifrost. Bifrost Arena is pretty unique, having ice bridges on both sides of the arena. These can be destroyed by several Bifrost attacks. Bifrost can jump. If he lands while doing this attack, and you are on any ground, you will be stunned for some time. This can also destroy the ice bridges. Bifrost can attack with a bite, and this can destroy the aforementioned ice bridges. Just stay away for the most part, it's pretty easy to dodge. Bifrost can open his mouth, and send a series of ice spikes at you. These will be shot in a pattern, which have his closest ice spikes fire first, and farthest ones fire last. There are two variations, with either one being fired at a time, or two being fired at a time. Dash or jump depending on the situation, it shouldn't be too bad to dodge regardless. Bifrost will open his mouth and create a spiked icicle. He then jumps on the icicle, and sending four shards of it flying. The jump can still stun you, so just jump when he lands, and you'll dodge the shards perfectly fine. The ice shards can destroy the bridges. Bifrost can send spiked wheels. These will roll across the floor and walls. If the side he sends them on has the ice bridge still there, this attack is nothing to worry about. If there isn't, the wheel will eventually go to your position, meaning you have to dash out of the way. You can get close to Bifrost and just destroy the wheels before they move making them a non-threat. Bifrost can take a while, but the fight isn't that bad. Number 6, Cyranac. Throughout the fight, Cyranac will dash into thin air, being invincible until he reappears. This can be annoying if he constantly does this. Cyranac can fire his kunais in many ways. On the ground, he will fire two kunais at a time, twice in a row. In the air, he fires four kunais diagonally. If he is hanging on a platform, he fires 3 kunais, then 1 directly at you. All of them should be easy to dodge, but they can cover a lot of space. As Gray, Cyranac uses his cross shurikens. Two shurikens will be thrown, and they bounce off the walls. Move away from the shurikens as they go. If he throws them on the ground, get on the upper platform, and then drop down when the shuriken hits the ceiling, and stay on that wall. If he throws them in the air, don't worry about them, but they can get close to you, so react if they do decide to hit you. As Ash, Cyranac uses the Mandela Shuriken. He will summon four around him, and then spread him across the arena. The attack can be hard to react to, but it isn't too hard to dodge. Cyranac will clone himself into four, and hang in the air. If you hit the one that actually is Cyranac, the attack stops. If you don't, each clone will lodge two kunais in your direction, for a total of eight. If you hit a clone, it just disappears. It's very easy to notice when he does this attack, so use your homing shot, as it will hit all of the clones that are marked, either skipping the attack, or making it a lot easier to manage. The fight depends if Cyranac wants to use his special moves or not, as they both can be difficult to dodge. Gray has the harder fight against Cyranac, as the shurikens can be incredibly tricky to dodge. Number 5, Aeolus. Aeolus will perform the triple slash, and two sonic booms are emitted. Dash jump over the sonic booms, and you'll be fine. Aeolus will jump forward and slash at you, stay away. Aeolus will jump forward and do an air dash towards you, slashing in the process. He can also do this twice. Dash under Aeolus, and you'll dodge it. Aeolus can do a dash slash on the ground, quickly rushing toward you. Either jump over him as he's rushing, or stay away. As Gray, Aeolus fires two tornadoes that go in a V pattern. If he does this on the ground, simply dash through the opening. If he does it in the air, dash jump through the opening. As Ash, Aeolus will fire two tornadoes, one in front of him and one behind him. If he does this on the ground, jump over the tornado if Aeolus is up close when he does it. If not, do the same thing. If he does it in the air, dash under the tornado if it's up close. If not, jump over it. I have health, Aeolus will go to either side and dash upwards, hovering as well. He then summons two electric objects that will emit several electric beams. These will turn in a clockwise and counterclockwise form respectively. This attack will take good timing of your movement and dashes to dodge, as dashing too early or too late will get you hit. This makes it pretty hard to dodge, even being one of the hardest attacks to dodge in the game. This fight has some of the harder attacks to dodge in the game, but if you notice the opportunities to get free damage in, he goes down fast. Aeolus is harder as Ash, as you need to especially watch how close Aeolus is to you at all times. Number 4, Argoyle and Ugoyle. 
This fight by far has the highest health of all pseudoroids. As there are two main bosses to worry about, use your homing shot for extra damage. Our Goyo and Yugoyo will rush you with jumping, and then dashes. When they dash off screen, try to get damage in. When they get back on screen, they will jump to the platforms before rushing again. Try to get damage in. Stay on the platforms when they are off screen, then get off them when they get back on screen. Our Goyo and Yugoyo will kick a bomb at each other for some time before kicking it to you. This attack is easy to dodge, but watch who has the bomb, so you can react to it being kicked to you. They can also just kick the bomb at you. Our Goyo and Yugoyo will kick a bomb at each other 4 times, before it's converted into a triple shot. The way you know which one will do the triple shot is whoever kicks the bomb after the first kick. The one that does the triple shot will never jump to the platform. So keep jumping over the bomb until the third kick, and go on the platform before the final kick happens. After one of them loses half of their health, they will charge up on the platforms and go to the top of the screen. They then descend slowly, kicking a bomb until it detonates in the middle of the screen. They will go off screen, as the bomb launches energy blasts in 8 directions, into different variations. The best way to dodge it is being in the corner of the screen and slowly dodging the other blast by moving very slightly to the center of the screen. Keep in mind that either of the Goyos can come back and damage you very quickly after this, so be ready to jump over them or make a mad dash to a platform. Both Argoyle and Yugoyle technically have 1.5 health bars. If either of them loses their HP, they will no longer be able to fight, and the fight is basically a free win after that. If they were in the middle of an attack, and one of them was taken out, that attack will stop. This fight is an RNG nightmare. If they have good RNG, the fight is easy. If not, this fight is by far the hardest of the pseudoroids, really only having Queen B with bad RNG as competition. But you can take them out so quickly with your homing and charge shots, and even the Giga attack can do good damage to them. So while the RNG problem is fixed somewhat, it's still there. Number 3, Queen B. For most of the fight, Queen B will be in a hive. This hive has to be damaged until it explodes in order for Queen B to be damaged. Whenever the hive breaks, Queen B will take damage. Queen B has several attacks she can do when she is in the hive. Queen B will have her hive open and fire multiple laser blasts in several directions. These laser blasts can be turned on and off. Dodge this attack by moving to how the lasers turn on and off. Queen B will release 5 small bees from her hive. These will target you and explode on contact. If she is a decent distance above you, you don't need to worry. But if she corners you, Take down the small beast the best you can with the homing shot. Try to break the hive before this attack happens. Queen Bee will open her hive to fire 4 homing missiles, 2 on each side. The missiles can be destroyed, but they can come out suddenly. So if you can't dodge them, try to destroy them. The hive itself can also move. Since the hive is so big, you can get cornered. When Queen Bee's hive is broken, she will do 2 different attacks. Queen Bee will shoot the player with her stinger cannon. This is always done in 3 shot bursts. When she rises up and goes off screen, she does this in a 4 shot burst. Stay away and dash under the shots if needed. Queen Bee can also shoot fire shots, but they are slightly slower. She can do this several times, so dodge the same way you dodge the normal shots. At half health, when Queen Bee is in her hive, she will rise to the top of the screen. Then she will fire a huge laser shot, creating a burning area that will also send fire upward, 3 times on each side. She does this 3 times, moving positions every time. What you want to actually do is get close to the burning area, so you don't have to deal with the extra fire. Queen Bee isn't too difficult, but her attacks can be very dangerous. Conserving your biometal gauge for homing shots is especially important here. Number 2, Pandora and Prometheus. Pandora and Prometheus being really high up on a boss ranking? Where have I seen this before? Prometheus will generate two flaming pillars. He will either have them just charge at the sides, meaning you must keep hitting the pillar with shots to stay safe, or have them swirl, entering and exiting the background. Both of these aren't too bad to dodge. Pandora will create four electric versions of her staff to protect herself from shots. Two electric staffs will then spin and attack you, either sticking to the ground or staying in the air. They come back and do the other variation meaning you have to deal with both of them before they come back to Pandora. This happens twice. It isn't that hard to dodge, especially since you can get free damage with the homing shots. Pandora will fly from side to side, descending down, while Prometheus will appear and dash across the screen, eventually rising to the other side of it. To dodge this, stun Prometheus with a shot, and you have to do this quick enough or Pandora will hit you. Jump over Prometheus, and then jump over Pandora. This attack is easy enough to dodge when you see it coming, but the speed of the attack can be very hard to react to. Prometheus will go to the middle of the ground, stabbing his hair into it, which makes swords pop up in two sequences, covering the gaps in the first sequence. 
Pandora will also have bits orbiting her, and they will eventually leave the screen. Find gaps in the swords, then dodge Pandora's bits as they move. Pandora's bits will move up and down on the sides of the screen. They can have the element of ice, which means the ice spikes launched only move horizontally, or the element of thunder, which will have plasma shots that change direction once they hit you. She can change her element once before she stops attacking. After this, Prometheus strikes from the top of the screen, leaving four red flames behind. While you can stay on the sides and not get hit by the bits, the same can't be said for the ice spikes and plasma shots, as you'll basically get hit. And for Prometheus, it's very similar to the same attack in Mega Man ZX, but with less overall range. So after he hits the ground, go back to where he strike to dodge the flames, or move to the other side of the screen if he did it on one side. Like Argoyle and Ugoyle, they could be taken out quickly thanks to using the Giga Attack and the homing shot on them during duo attacks, but across the board, all of their attacks aren't easy to deal with, so they make up for that. Number 1, Master Albert. This fight is split into two parts, the Dragon Throne part and Albert himself. The Dragon Throne does not have a visible health bar, but it easily has the highest health of any boss in this game. The Dragon Throne part has three heads that do different things. In the center, which never moves, is how you damage it. The middle head will use its horn to stab the ground on the left side of the screen, and it will move to the right side, so you're basically just forced to the right side. To make the head reel back so you can dash under it, constantly shoot the horn. The left head will fire an energy sphere that travels along the ground, lifting boulders and hurling them into the air. Use the background to your advantage, as this spot especially is the easiest way to dodge it, by jumping over the energy sphere itself. The right head will fire bombs that will make contact with the floor. They will be targeted towards you, so you need to move to make gaps, so you can dodge. The dragons will create a black hole between their mouths, and a white hole will be created on the top left corner of the arena. The central head will attack with 5 shots that go into the black hole, and then the white hole will launch those shots back into the black hole. If you shoot the black hole, more shots will be added. Stay directly below the white hole to dodge the entirety of this attack, while constantly dashing as the black hole pulls you in. In the second phase, the dragons will separate from their weak spot, and become separate from the throne itself. The throne will launch missiles. These will never hit the left side of the screen, but they do take up a lot of space. They can be destroyed with shots. The separated heads will fire one shot each, in several different variations. Dodge as the variations are seen, as they will directly shoot in the direction their head is in. After you do enough damage, Albert starts the second part of the fight. When the second part starts, to damage Albert in this form, since he has a shield up, you need to hit the bits until the shield disappears, where Albert becomes vulnerable. Use the homing shot, as it can hit several bits at once. When Albert is shielded, he uses these four attacks. Albert will fire a series of four homing shots at you, one at a time. The fourth time, he will fire four homing shots very quickly. Keep moving and you should be fine. Albert will summon two massive plasma cyclones that will try to trap you in, with mini tornadoes hindering you further. If you damage the bits enough, the attack ends early. The sound cue for this attack is very easy to hear, so just go to the sides. Albert will create two shurikens with the bits, and they will go to one side of the arena, go to the other side, and dash under the shurikens as they rotate. Albert will have the bottom bit of the shield stab the ground. It will travel through the ground, rising slowly before it leaves the screen and come back to stab the ground again after a second or two. Run to the side that Albert isn't on, dash under him as he rises up, then run away from the side you were just on. When Albert loses his shield, he uses these attacks. He will also get his shield back after some time. Albert will go into the background and fire two giant spheres of energy that shoot sweeping lasers. Hit one of the spheres repeatedly with buster shots, as it will knock the sphere back. Albert will form a saber that will try to slash you, causing three pieces of debris to appear in the process. Go on the opposite side Albert and the Saber are on, or jump over the debris if possible. Albert will use the bits to form a press that hits the ground, summoning several flame pillars, and stunning you if you're on the ground, when the press hits the ground. Jump when the press hits the ground, and go in the gaps the pillars have. Albert will use the bits to form frozen dragons, that travel up and down across the arena. When there is a gap you can dash under, dash under and you'll dodge the attack. Keep in mind there are pieces of ice that can split if they are hit. Like Chrono Force, if you use the Time Bomb against him, he will form a clock and freeze time, resetting the Time Bomb. So if you plan on using Chrono Force for Albert, use it while Albert is doing an attack, ideally the Saber or Frozen Dragon attack. Albert is from what I know, the hardest boss in the Mega Man platformers, other than maybe Serpent since their difficulty is so similar, and obviously Omega from Mega Man CX, because he's Omega. Do I need to say more? Still, this boss is one of the hardest bosses I've ever fought, and it will probably stay that way for a while. 
thank you for watching this video. This video has been overdue by a few months or so, and getting around to making it was fun. I have a poll you can vote on if you haven't already. It will be deciding what my future boss rankings are in a certain order. After I make the Shovel Knight, Shovel of Hope boss ranking. The most voted one will be first, with the least voted one being last. The options are as said. Gravity Circuit, Paper Mario the Origami King, Kirby Superstar, Mega Man Zero. There was a game I was going to put on here, but it's a game inside of a game. And it's by far the least known game I thought about doing a boss ranking on. So it would get absolutely decimated in the poll. I'll get to it eventually, I'll just do it when I feel like it. Maybe even between the four boss ranking options I've already mentioned. That's all I gotta say though. Thank you for watching, and the next video you'll see from me will be one I've been cooking up for a while. I can't wait for you to see it.